Hello, I'm Alex Tang. I just want to continue our series on uh, the spiritual discipline and uh, contemplative prayer. This session will talk about praying with our imagination. But before I go on to that, let's just uh, share some uh, uh, thoughts about prayer. Here you can see that we are actually, when we, we are praying, we are actually in the presence of God. Okay, but we can, there are actually four parts here, the mind, which we, we are thinking about God, and our heart in emotionally loving God. So that's between the mind, our thoughts, the cognitive effect, and our emotions, our feelings for God. And then you can see on the axis, Okay, on, on the it's attentive to the absent God. Okay, God, we cannot see God. But we know that He is there. God is spirit, we cannot see Him. Okay, but we know that He is there and we can uh, uh, sort of respond to Him. Okay, so that is the absent God. But on the other side is the awareness, aware of the unknowable God. So there's group, this group of uh, uh, people who felt that God is such a, a thing that we can actually not know Him. That God is, un you cannot describe God because it's undescribable. So it, in, the, in that sense, what we want to do, the, the only way that we can define God is to talk about God is not. That means in negative. God God is not unjust. God is not uh, uh, the the um, uh, God is not uh, not a way of knowing. Okay, so in this way, you find that as we talk about prayer, we can actually have four quadrants. Okay, which are four types of prayer. Okay, so we are very used to the verbal prayer. Okay, so this I modify from James Houston. Okay. And uh, uh, we, do, we, we are used to ver verbal prayer. Verbal prayer is that we, we use with words and we talk, pray. It means we're using our mind and we are addressing a God that is not, that we cannot see. That's why you call it absent God. It's not that he's not there, but we cannot see him. Okay. So that is verbal prayer. That you many, and purely, uh, most of the time, our prayer is like that. It's more of petition, thanksgiving. So we petition in the sense that we ask God for things. Okay, and there's something wrong with asking God for things. God wants us to ask Him for things. Okay, we, we uh thanksgiving to, to thank God for what He has given us. But all that is using our mind. Okay, but if you see the lower quadrant, is where we have attentive to the absent God, then using our mind our mind and our heart. So there is a, a, a effective component in our prayer to this absent God. And that's what we call the meditative prayer. Here, we will use our mind and also our emotions as we pray. That means uh, we not only use words alone. Yeah. Prayer is actually a, a, a very holistic because we use our whole body. Then we talk about breath prayer, centering prayer, the Jesus prayer. And all, all these are, uh, are, in a way, using our emotions too. So that's a method of prayer. Then, if we go on to the other side, we talk about contemplative prayer. Here is that we use our emotions, but we are praying to the God that we, we can't know. It's beyond, it's greater than all that we can. Okay, so we just sit in his presence, we know that he is around us, he's everywhere, he's transcendent and uh, uh, he's, uh, he's so with evilness. Okay, and then uh, on the upper quadrant is the mind and the awareness of the unknowable God, which is ecstatic prayer. These are where the, um, usually the, not everybody goes into this part of prayer. Usually this is a mystic sort of church. 
Okay, and we have 2,000 years of uh, very rich Christian heritage. And throughout the history of the church, there are mystics or people who come into such an ecstasy of knowing God's presence, of feeling God's presence. Example is like Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross. There are people who, who felt God is there, Moses, Elijah. So we tap all this in, in terms of prayer, which is what they call the apopatic and catapatic. Apopatic is a negative way. That God is unknowable. There's no way our finite mind can know an unknowable God. So any human concept of God is inadequate. So we only describe it via the negative. That's why it's called via negative. Yeah. Okay. The catapatic or the positive way is that we can try to uh, uh, understand God by having uh, attention to image, by imagination, by emotions, and by symbols and metaphors. And that's why churches, we have symbol of the cross, we have symbol of the, the church is building itself, a symbol of God. So God is just as in the positive. So the apopatic and the catapatic, which are the two big groups of uh, uh, knowing God. And you find that the catapatic is attention to the absent God. And the apopatic is the attention to the unknowable God. Okay, so here I will stop this and then I will go back to uh, praying without imagination. Okay, so it is more of the uh, uh, we are positive. Okay. Now praying to imagine is not something new. I mean, even the early uh, church fathers have been advocating we pray with our imagination. Okay. It's only uh, become systemized by St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesuit, or Society of Jesus of Jesuit. And when he, he formalized the spiritual exercises, in one of the weeks of the exercises, he actually thought about that we can pray using our imagination. And I think that's very uh, useful. You know, sometimes we, uh, they are, we, we should try different way of praying. There's no one best way, no one fixed way of praying. So there are different ways of praying. And I believe that uh, being aware and being uh, knowing different ways will be quite useful and helpful as we uh, move along in our prayer life. So what actually uh, Ignatius uh, taught us is that not as we pray, as we read the Bible, we put ourselves into the Bible scene. Okay. A good example he, he gave is uh, Matthew. Matthew 5, remember? We are quite familiar with this, the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, Matthew 5 uh, uh, talks about uh, the Beatitudes, where you have uh, Jesus, okay? And, he, and now that when he saw the crowds, he went up to the mountains side and sat down. And the disciples came to him and began to teach them, saying, okay, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, imagine that how great it is if that we can be present there we, on the mountainside. Okay? And we can hear Jesus saying this thing to us. So that is where praying with our imagining comes in. So we steal ourselves, we steal our mind, we get ourselves ready, and then we quietly picture ourselves. Okay? Imagine that we are there listening to Jesus. Jesus, you can see Jesus on the hill there, and there's a crowd around, everybody sitting down. Okay, you can feel the wind in, in, on, in your hair. You see the grass on, uh, you're sitting on, you're stepping on. You can feel the murmur of people. And then Jesus says, Blessed are the poor. And that is what prayer, praying by imagination. Okay, it's not inventing new story. You do not put in something new. Okay, it's not uh, uh, using your imagination to 
create a scene or create a movie. No. Okay. It's using your imagination to sit here. Okay. Blessed are poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom of God. And you are with all the other people listening to Jesus say that, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. So you just imagine that you're there and you're listening and Jesus is speaking. And then, I don't know if Jesus said, you feel that Jesus is speaking to you directly. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So it's putting yourself in the scene, in, in with your imagination. Imagine that you're there, you know, at the transfiguration, you're there at the bottom, right? and then you look up and you see uh, Jesus, Elijah, Moses, you know, and at the, the uh, Sea of Galilee, in a storm, you were in the boat with Jesus and the disciples, you know, and all these are, are scenes that we can really imagine. And I think it'd be very useful as a part of the type of prayer you can use to uh, nurture your prayer life and to deepen your walk with God. I hope that this is, is useful and I wish you all the best. May God bless you as you continue in your prayer life.